By now, we've all seen the Bud Light controversy, and a lot of people are probably thinking, what was Bud Light's board of directors thinking when this happened? And so I want to take a minute to break this down, because I think there's lessons for all of us as business owners, as business leaders, as even just consumers. So the first point of this is Bud Light is just a brand in a massive company, right? So Anheuser-Busch and InBev, which is the parent companies that kind of control this whole system, have a bunch of brands. And so whether this decision to enter into the partnership uh, and redo the beer cans and all of that even went to the board of directors is unlikely. That was probably made by people at the Bud Light level, at that at lower level that were really just business people, marketing people who were making a strategic decision. And what they were thinking and how they did the analysis real is a real question. Now, whether the Anheuser-Busch board is involved now that is almost certainly the case, right? This has now percolated up because this has become such a big news story and there's headlines everywhere that I'm sure the board of directors has been informed about it and are actually either uh, informally consulting about it. They may be scheduling meetings because you have to think about the economic value of Bud Light. And so Bud Light is such a valuable brand. Uh, Budweiser, Bud Light, probably the two most valuable brands within that company, certainly here in America that they have to be thinking about how, what do we do to protect this value? What do we do here? So what we probably have here is officers of the company, leaders of the company, leaders probably at the Bud Light brand level uh, made a marketing decision. And they probably have significant leeway given it's such a large company, right? Things get delegated down. You have this board of directors of Anheuser-Busch who's running you know, at least 10 major brands or whatever. And then they are pushing down and hiring officers to run things. And in a company like that, with these massive operations, a bunch of uh, factories, a bunch of different brands, you probably have decision making being made at different levels in a fashion where the board wasn't consulted about this. They hired the people, they picked the people, the people made the decision. And it's not normal for a board to go back and second guess the officers, but it is part of their job to oversee what's happening. So usually what would happen is the board would delegate the authority, officers make the decisions. Uh, you know, obviously there's gonna be periodic reviews of these marketing uh, people and officers probably going through the president of the division, right? So you've got some marketing officer at Bud Light, chief marketing officer made this decision uh, to sign off on this partnership and spend whatever money they did to create the partnership and then to rebrand uh, some of these cans, that decision was probably made at that level. Maybe the president of Bud Light was consulted. There was probably meetings there uh, because there's probably a significant amount of funds and, of course, the rebranding. But this may have not percolated up to the Anheuser-Busch level, uh, depending on how their internal procedures are. And it almost certainly didn't, at least on the initial brush, get to the board of directors, right? So the best guess sitting here on the outside is the board of directors didn't know that this was happening. They just were, you know, mining all the major things they, they do. Should we, should we build a new factory? You know, maybe they're thinking about a merger or an acquisition. Maybe they're talking about acquiring somebody, right? It's hard to know what's happening. Anheuser-Busch you know, tends to grow their brand. You can see they have a lot of brands. A lot of those brands were brought in by acquisition. Uh, they also are looking strategically long-term. I'm sure marketing and branding and positioning is sometimes a discussion at the board level, but it's just one of many tools they're working on. And certainly the marketing of one sub-brand like Bud Light is probably not there. Now, with Budweiser and Bud Light being so closely associated to one another, and then the Bud Light brand, of course, being so valuable, I am sure that there are lots of discussions going on, either formally or informally, at the higher level about what do we do, what does this mean for our long-term brand, how does it affect our whole portfolio of companies, because some people are talking about a boycott of the entire company. I'd love your thoughts in the comments. What do you think uh, they should do? What do you think the answers are? 
Uh, go ahead and drop comments. But remember, comments are confidential. Sometimes people want to put business questions in there about their business or their board. Uh, if it's something you don't want other people seeing, do not put it in the YouTube comments because they're not confidential. Uh, we like to take general questions, specific questions. Reach out to an attorney licensed in your jurisdiction that can help you uh, with your specific questions. And I hope you subscribe to the channel. We do regular updates on business law. It's kind of fun to pick up a hot topic like Bud Light. We may do that again in the future. We'd love to know your thoughts and what you think about it. All right, I'll see you in the comments. Catch you soon.